React took the world by storm back in 2013 and now, almost 10 years later, has a complete ecosystem around it and constantly ranks first in almost all dev surveys. While other big players in the space like Angular or Vue have a decent share from the frontend market and newer tools such as Velt or Quick are redefining the way we are writing code for the UI, I am arguing that it will be extremely difficult to replace React as the community favorite. Regardless of what the future holds, React is a must-have in any frontend developer's arsenal and in this video we'll take a look at its history, its main features and the most common libraries and patterns used by the community today. Let's start with a brief history. When it was first released, React introduced a groundbreaking concept the virtual DOM. Back then, the consensus was that the real DOM was fairly slow and performing DOM updates was the slowest part of the front-end app. Remember that, at that time, the front-end space and single-page applications were in their infancy with just a couple of established MVC frameworks such as AngularJS or Ember. What React proposed was a new way of analyzing and updating the DOM by performing validations and checks on a clone of the actual DOM instead of relying on this slow technology and an obsolete dirty checking approaches. This technique introduced other issues and caveats into the system and we'll discuss later about the implications of concepts such as rendering or reconciliation. Another great design decision React took from the beginning was to focus on a component-based architecture, despite the fact that, at that time, most alternatives were focused on MVC or MVVM patterns. So, React made it really easy to build UI interfaces based on isolated entities called components. Using JavaScript classes and a very intuitive API, developers could declare and work with internal reactive state, run code on different times in the component lifecycle, and use templates to define DOM structures. While on the templates topic, this is another aspect where React innovated. JSX was, in the beginning, a pretty controversial templating language, mostly because it was mixing together JavaScript and HTML in one big pile of apparent mass. However, during the years, it proved itself as an extremely pragmatic tool and some of today's new libraries such as Quick or Solid adopted it as well. Anyhow, enough with the history, let's look at React today. The way I see it, two main changes happened in the library's recent history, which helped shape the tool we are using today. First of all, the addition of hooks to the language did wonders on simplifying the API and made working with React feel like you are working with plain JavaScript. After all, at this point, you just need to define a function returning JSX and you pretty much have a running component. State and side effects are also easily managed with hooks, so all in all, you need to know 3 or 4 built-in hooks and some JSX and you can start building complex UIs in a reliable manner. The second big change in the ecosystem was the introduction of Create React App and improved CLI tools to scaffold new projects. While this doesn't seem like a big deal, and the ease of starting new project is not really a concern in your day-to-day -day life, you should know that at some point, React was guilty of causing devs to coin the JavaScript fatigue phrase. React is, at the end of the day, just a UI library. Because of its popularity, a huge number of third-party libraries flood the dev space. You had state management solutions, routing libraries, custom components, utilities, form handlers and more, all having to interact with each other while React gave you no guidelines. So you would end up spending days trying to make this work with that and the other, just to end up with a basic project. Create React App solved all that, and we are now at a point where we can set up and start a modern web app with just a couple of commands. This instance alone proves one of the many strengths of React the dedicated team behind it. While navigating an ever-changing environment and while facing various complex problems, they were able to constantly improve both the dev experience and the performance of the library. Another example to support all this is the whole state management saga, a problem that haunted developers for years. With single page applications becoming the norm and more and more logic being transitioned to the client, managing data and keeping the associated UI in sync became a real problem. Again, React came up with a solution for this. The flux pattern. Following the saying when all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail, the React community jumped in, took this simple concept and made it 10 times more difficult to work with. The hardest task in programming is to make complicated things seem easy and, yet again, once the situation got out of hand, the React team reacted accordingly and simplified the whole data management by expanding their context API. So now, by combining the context API with a very light state management library such as Recoil, which by the way is another Facebook-backed library, you end up with a very straightforward way of handling and sharing data through an application. It's all well and good, but as I already mentioned, React is just a UI library and plays only a small part in this whole building web app story. So let's discuss the third-party libraries and the ecosystem built around React next. Considering the direction the front-end world is taking in 2022, I'll start with one of the stars, Next.js. 
For a bit of context, while the mid-2010s were the years of single-page applications, more recently we are shifting back towards a multi-page application approach and we focus on involving the server in the rendering process as well. Next.js is what we are now calling a meta framework. In other words, it is a set of libraries and standards built on top of React which aim to solve the most common front-end problems in a predictable and structured manner. With the release of its version 13, Next.js actually takes things one step further and tackles the whole full-stack space by leveraging Node's power and allowing you to create and consume REST APIs as well. Among the main selling points of Next.js you'll find a file system based router which will help you correctly structure and build your app, custom layouts to organize your JSX templates and reuse common components such as headers and footers, and last but not least, React server components and server-side rendering, which is a pretty big deal these days, since alternatives such as Astro or Quick are really pushing things forward performance-wise. We'll discuss more about the competitors and alternative in just a second, but first, let's briefly look at two more topics which spawn a wide range of third-party libraries. I was mentioning a bit earlier the state management problem and recoil. In my experience, it's easy to over-engineer handling state, but Recoil reaches a good balance between simplicity and power. While other well-known libraries such as Angular or Vue got their lightweight state management solutions as well, see Akita for Angular or Pina for Vue, newer alternatives such as Velt or Solid come with lightweight store solutions out of the box. So, clearly, the direction is from complex to simple on this one. Another big aspect of development where established libraries excel and newer alternatives are lacking is component libraries. Material UI is pretty much a big thing across the board, but I'm also really impressed with Ant Design, which is my go-to solution for this kind of stuff. Furthermore, you have extremely popular utilities such as React Query to obstruct away data fetching or Formix to reliably manage forms, so you get the gist. Whatever you need, React has you covered. Okay, so enough with all this praise for React. Let's look at some of its competitors through an objective lens. We can split them into two big categories, the status quo, meaning Angular and Vue, and the new kids on the block. I'm including here tools such as Velt, Solid or Quick. I hate doing one-to-one -one comparisons between frameworks, since I strongly believe that the best tool for the job is the tool you know best, so I will refrain from making too many comments. My two cents on it is that while Angular is the best option for large teams and enterprise software, React and Vue are more appealing for the rest of the dev community. What I find more interesting is this new wave of frameworks and the new approaches they are taking to achieve better performance, both on the app side and over the network. While the virtual DOM was a really big deal for a long time, Solid and Svelte are proving that by leveraging smart algorithms and accepting that the real DOM's performance really improved in the last years, the virtual DOM abstraction is not needed anymore. This means less code shipped to the browser and more efficient updates. React's reactivity is also being put under the microscope and simple constructs such as Solid.js signals are a step forward towards real reactivity. Finally, it looks like we also got a better alternative for server-side rendering and hydration strategies in Quick's resumable apps architecture. So while things look more alive than ever on the front-end space and there are really promising alternatives out there, there still is a long way to go until somebody can come up close to the popularity and the richness of the React ecosystem. If you found this video useful, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.